Hey everybody, welcome back to my studio. I'm getting a few questions on the Discord group and they're centering around what do I use for paintbrushes? What do I use? What's my painting uh, equipment, as it were? And I'm happy to share that with you guys. Over the past many years, I have talked about paintbrushes. I've talked about learning paint techniques. Um, we got a lot of younger new guys coming into the group who are just learning the hobby and we've also got guys who are coming back to the hobby after taking long hiatuses so <clears throat> i wanted to take a, a a little time today and go over kind of where i'm at 2021 uh it's always evolving it's always changing uh as artists we're exploring and learning new things. Now, let's go to my top down. And um, <clears throat> this is a perfect example um, of something that I will uh, do to further my painting skills. And I'm always experimenting, right? So this is new for me. I have not painted Space Marines for years and years. And these new kits are amazing. They're very dynamic poses, uh, as I've said before. And I've totally on a new uh, learning expedition here using my airbrush for my base coats, uh, which I'm, I'm really glad that I'm doing. And as I mentioned on the podcast and on my latest studio update, I'm switching over to these game airs because as you may know, this is going to be my first uh, thing we're going to go over with uh, on this video. <laughs> and that is, uh, I do not use wet palette. I have a wet palette. It is a nice P9. It's got the closable case, the nice foam, nice quality foam. Um, and uh, so you just basically use parchment paper. You can buy that by the roll at the grocery store and just cut it to size. <laughs> I felt it always made my paints too wet. I don't... <laughs> That's not the whole issue. The, the other issue is I don't paint like that. And that's my, my style. I don't sit and paint for hours and hours. And this is what I do. I paint in short bursts uh, for me. I'm usually got another project I'm either building, I'm um, cleaning up, I'm always doing something. I may be over in my game hall uh, play testing a game, uh, you know, learning rules. <laughs> so I typically will do this. I start with I have a stack of these now you can get these I've had these for years you can see just a tiny bit of discoloration still inside there but for the most part these clean up really really good my wife cleans these for me I put them in the sink upstairs and uh, she gets them clean for me but it has almost like a Teflon smoothness and again these are four or five years old and I just rotate them um, so in this, these I can mix, and here's my old trusty, I have another one, this one I've used for years, but I have a spare one that's brand new. You can see it's a little, a little grody, and I've been, used it for so long, but uh, it just depends on when I put the paint out into the, the palette, uh, I'll judge how thick it is, thin it is, if I need to add one drop of water, two drops of water, I'll typically do one drop at a time. And then I use this, you know, really high tech gadget. <clears throat> I mean, I had to, I had to call NASA to get this thing and they finally shipped me one. Uh, it's an old piece of a paintbrush. I don't know, that's probably from five, six years ago. And I will use this to stir and then I'll tap and then I'll stir, then I tap clean it off, put it over here next to my tray. I got a paintbrush tray over here. I keep the paintbrushes I'm currently really are my workhorse brushes. And then that's how I start out. And then that's why I liked this product so much is it's coming out exactly the way I want it right out of the pot or right out of the dropper bottle. Okay. So there's my first tip. And this is, I've only got these two guys. And as I say, red now I've got several bottles of red I use a lot of red um, this is scarlet but when this is done and I reordered scarlet I will get airbrush scarlet 
Make sense? All right, and then over time I will get rid of them. So there's the paint palette I use. You can get these at any art store. Um, you know, you, you can find them. You, I'm sure you can probably get them on Amazon. Um, brush. Or Gamer Regiment. You know how much I love these brushes. They are a good value. This is Red Sable. This is not synthetic. Um, I can typically get upwards of six months out of a brush. You know why? Because I take care of my brushes. I've got my rinse. I got my typically clear. If I'm down here and I don't want to switch this out, I'll switch over to this. Um, so I always make sure it's clean. Try not to ever get paint at the base of your brush. Okay, there's a fancy term terminology for that. Uh, just avoid doing that at all cost. If you do get brush deep into the brush, especially your dry brushes, this is a small dry brush, which is a uh, I'll get Army Painter. You can typically buy these as a set. You'll get the you'll get the regiment, the dry brush, and the fine detail, which this is called insane detail now. Um, I'm using this probably two percent of the time, just at the very end to pick out fine details. I use this small dry brush all the time, either for larger areas I need to paint on a model, on a 28 mil model, say, like especially if I'm painting around the edge of the base, I will use my small dry brush for that. It's the perfect size, right? <clears throat> so that's tip number one, guys, is try to not get up to this, but if you do, I have another little glass uh, container here, and you see there's a tiny bit of liquid in there. I don't make, take much, but, and I buy this by the case, also for my airbrush, cleaning my airbrush, it is, rubbing alcohol put a little rubbing alcohol let that brush sit in there for five minutes or so let it it will soften up that paint that's gotten deep into your brush <clears throat> it's what i like to call a deep cleaning and uh you know jiggle it around like you would with water rinse rinse it with water and then clean it and you know inspect the brush and then um once you're done doing that procedure you can get on online pretty much anywhere uh, that you can get model equipment um, and you get your, this is the master's brush cleaner. I've used this for years. It lasts a long time. It's basically soap. It has a really good aroma to it. It has a, a brush conditioner in it, but all you have to do is get a little bit on the brush. You can see I've gotten some paint off on here. See, it's basically soap, right? Um, but it's formulated for brushes and you'll work this with your fingers on the brush like this guys and again clean it clean it with water and then at the end of the session when I'm done pretty much for the day I'm like hey I'm not gonna paint anymore today I will dip it in my brush restore this is a Vallejo product this will get uh, re-moisturized the bristles the sable hair which is from a horse so you can see it's basically a liquid you just dip the brush in set it I'll set it back on my palette like this hanging over the edge which is pretty much what I do all the time uh, when I park my brush and let it air dry overnight and it's ready to go the next day or in a few days I will rinse it with water because it has kind of a nasty flavor to it because this is my next tip for you especially you new guys uh, between colors or between uh, palettes as I rotate this around like a like a revolver um, That's the secret to keep in the point, All right? Look at that point. And I set her down. I may watch a piece of a movie. I may watch a documentary. I may watch a couple YouTube videos. I may watch a whole host of things that I watch on this little TV over here, uh, my little smart TV. And it's ready to go again, nice and sharp. You can also either do that when the other thing I'll give you guys as a tip is say I'm using this flat brown and I've got a bunch of brown to do on a on a say 20 models, 10 models. You'll notice it will start to crust up, you know, on your brush. It'll start to dry and crust up a little bit. So get that off of there. Either you can just take your paper towel, try to get that off there. Do that, get it sharp again. 
but I try not to allow too much of a crust to develop where I'm basically getting the paint about halfway up on the brush. My next tip here, okay, I'm going to share another tip of my, my style, the equipment that I'm using, and my, like again, my painting style. So let's do this. Let's take, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a washer, a sinker like you buy for fishing. Get, get, get you a bag of these, try to find some. Keep them handy when I get a new bottle. I had a guy just the other day ask me, he said, how do you get the, the sinker in the bottle? There's that little tiny top. Guys, all you have to do is take your paper towel, grab this tip and gently wiggle and pull it up. See how easy that comes out? It's just not hard. <clears throat> and put your sinker in. So obviously we want a sinker that's lesser diameter than the bottle top. So let's go ahead and we'll shake them again. I'm gonna put just a little bit of paint because I wanna show you this is important. I tend to put my paint a little off to the side, not right in the middle. And then what I do, I just don't dip in. What I do is I, I pull the paint out like this and I turn my brush. See, I'm turning my brush, I'm turning my brush, I'm turning my brush. And I get a nice even distribution of that paint. You don't want to put too much paint on the brush. Guys, you just don't want to. You see how it's only about halfway up? And I'll do what I have to do until I need more paint and I'll do the same thing. But you can see the consistency of that paint is like cream. And that's what you want. That's my ideal consistency. You do not want to use paint that's too thick, guys. You're going to fight the paint. This I can literally push and get up into the nooks and the crannies if I need to. Let's go ahead and... That's the next tip. That's the next tip. Glass, see-through. I want to see... I do not want to use dirty water. Before every paint session, I will... clean these. I'll go up to the kitchen. I'll clean them. I'll put lukewarm water in them. I'll start each paint session with fresh water. You have to do that. Especially metallics. If you're going to be using a lot of metallics like my upcoming Romans, and I'm going to be painting a lot of uh, chain mail, <clears throat> I will designate one of these just for rinsing my metallics in. Right. That way the metal flakes don't contaminate your other paints that you're going to be applying maybe that session or during that day, right? Um, lots of paper towels. We buy them by the case, but always keep a nice big roll of paper towels near. Uh, I use a big roll of paper towels probably every month. Um, so we went over the cleaner, the brush restore, the deep clean, the deep clean with rubbing alcohol. Don't let your brush sit in there too long. It will huff your brush out. It's very, uh, it's very harsh on, uh, on especially on red sable. I'm talking five, ten minutes. You just want to get that paint that's deep in the brush to get out of there and get cleaned out. <laughs> Next, I buy cheap brushes. Yeah, I'm a big Kings Island fan. Anybody that's familiar with Kings Island rides, the beast. Um, so this will be, I'll keep some of my old spit brushes. Now you see here, one of my old regiment, no, this is one of my old detail brushes. You see that once I start getting really dark and I start getting too much splitting, even though I'm using brush restore, I'll still keep them in case I want to use them for like a throwaway circumstance where I'm going to use maybe an enamel paint. But you can see I've got, uh, I get these at a local craft store. You can get them in big bags. They're cheap. I will use these, especially the bigger ones, for dry brushing. I even will dry brush my new game mats, my fleece game mats with a big brush. So that's kind of my catch-all. And then I've got another. These are more quality brushes. I, I'm saving these for doing maybe on terrain pieces where I want a really nice finish. I'm doing my larger dry brushing on terrain like buildings, huts. All the things I've been printing for future games, that's what I'm saving this for. And of course, I just have an assortment of the three brushes that I use all of the time. Brand new ones. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, three packs. Um, 
and then every once in a while I'll get on Amazon every six, seven, eight months and I'll order me three or four or five regiment brushes, just regiment brushes. You just click, 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 three or four. They're not expensive, guys. For like 15 bucks, you get the three brushes I mentioned, the small dry brush, the detail brush, and the regiment brush, which is going to be your workhorse brush. That's what I use 90% of the time. Red Sable keeps a nice tip for a long time if you take care of your brush and get the get the paint out of your brush you have to invest in these what five bucks yeah five bucks to make your brushes last longer and not just that guys it just makes the painting more enjoyable when you have uh, a quality brush that's been maintained and you can really get in and get the details because that's what i'm doing guys i'm experimenting with different colors right i'm experimenting all the time with different techniques i even am experimenting like with this with the white i was not so happy with how brash the white is so i'm using a blue wash so experiment with different washes uh, uh vallejo sells a, an assorted uh box of washes okay red wash flesh tone wash green wash that's good for making uh uh, weathering on copper, uh, copper tone paints, uh, which leads me to my next point and my next tip for you newer guys is I would highly recommend you do not buy those big $200 Vallejo or Army Painter has them. These big kits that have 200 paints or 100 paints. <clears throat> Here's what you do. It's just like buying tools. If you if you do your own repairs, you do things around your house that you fix and repair. I buy a a, a, a tool when I need it. Okay. Uh, it's not a super great analogy because when I brought a big nice set of Craftsman tools with a nice tool chest to put in my heated workshop, I bought like a basic tool starter kit, right? I guess if you're getting like smaller boxes, like if you're painting something for World War II and they have an assortment of World War II paints, which Vallejo sells, uh, that's that's something I could go along with. But if you're getting those big sets, you find a lot of those colors you don't ever use. And I tend to just order paints when I need them for projects. I'll sit down and say, I need a lighter shade of brown. The stuff I have is too dark. And I'll start formulating the color schemes that I want to use and I'll get on Amazon, or now I'm really going straight to Noble Knight Games in Wisconsin here um, and trying to give us a, the, the local guy the business instead of Amazon, so to speak. And uh, like I, a year or so ago, I started getting into more vibrant colors. I wanted oranges and yellows and different shades of reds. Um, and I would get on and I would just order those, you know, sky blue, you know, these really cool colors you really need to get in your paint palette right and then you can experiment because you can always guys you can always go back and cover it up with another color it's not the end of the world this space marine project has really been a giant experiment for me right playing with different techniques different colors different schemes um so that's kind of where i'm at so that's my brushes guys that's the paints i use these are the washes i use like browns and things i'll buy the bigger pots of brown wash there's a light brown wash there's a dark brown wash there's black and when i get into using my washes the colors i use the most dark brown brown black i will get those in the larger pots right <clears throat> the vallejo air if i find that there's like the blacks and the things that i use a lot they sell bigger bottles of these which is another advantage to going with the air colors <clears throat> because the colors i use a lot of white red black my primary colors i'm going to buy those in the bigger bottles right so i can get more use out of them and i'll just put them up on the top of my rollo rollo matic you may not be able to see it let me see if i can shift this over just a little bit pick up one of these guys it's a sp space saver you can get them on micromark.com look around online bunch of various vendors sell these it's basically a lazy susan for paint <laughs> right you know fit most paint pots um larger stuff you can put up on the top and it can serve space and you just spin it around and pick out what you want i love this thing i can organize my paints by color color families right and i always end up with the you know 10 or so pots over here that's totally fine 
And now we're going to cut away because there's the other tool that I use that's related to painting, and that is my airbrush setup. <laughs> Very important as your as a next step as a, a intermediate to more advanced painting. Um, I started with the cheapo, the cheapo um, starter box. I'm, I'm sure you see them on uh, Master. I think it's Mastercraft. Um, but we're going to pop over here. I'm going to reposition the camera, and we'll go over my airbrush setup. Okay, guys, we're back. I got the camera angle set up as best I can so I can show everything, still keep me in the shot, so bear with me here. Okay, for starters, when I took this plunge, uh, I did not have a spray booth. You, As far as I'm concerned, you have to have a spray booth. These are micro particles of plastic, guys. That's what's in acrylic paint. <laughs> and it will get in your lungs. Now, you can wear a mask, a respirator that's got the screw on filters that's the type of mask you're gonna need not just one of those little paper masks like the okay I'm not gonna say anything about it let's not even go there <laughs> like the paper masks are making us wear <laughs> anyway you get my idea if they're not comfortable for a little bit more uh, you can get the Zenny this is Z-E-N-Y they're all over the internet but I highly recommend you make sure you're getting the right model because this model uh, it's going to fire up now hold on i'm going to fire it up and you'll see what i'm talking about led lights now when i need to clean it's got a bad connection you hear it firing up in the back of this box guys are filters you can buy these they're cheap they're like 15 bucks for four of them and I only change these like every six months. So a package of these will last you a couple of years at least. Unless you're like really painting a lot. So I have not ever had to vent it out. I've had it even when I had it in my other location over here for the last couple of years. There's never a spot that's being portrayed onto the wall. I did not ever have to vent it out with the included flexible tube and they got a little doodad that you can use to vent it out a window i've not ever had to mess with that and i know that this works because the paint all ends up in this filter <laughs> and you can easily see it um, and when you spray your airbrush like this away from the cabinet all it gets sucked right into that filtration system that's a two-step filtration system there's a there's a fine and a, and a not so fine and there's two elements I use a another desk lamp with a 4000K um, bulb that's LED. It's a diffused bulb. I've not really had to mess with using diffused cabinets in this area. I may in the future. I don't know. Uh, so one thing I learned from my cheap starter box. And I still have it. Master airbrush. Okay, it's decent. It's decent. It'll get you by. Uh, it's it's got the big pot. Um, I'm probably gonna give it away. The next guys that come to play here in the gaming hall, I'm probably gonna say, hey, I've got my old single stage air compressor that just needs a new regulator and that. I'm just gonna give it away so it's not laying around. <clears throat> but what did I finally switch over to? I'm going to show you. I switched over to the Iwata Neo. That's the Iwata Neo. I like the Iwata Neo because, A, it's Iwata. It's high quality. Um, it's very good brush. It's short. It's easy to hold in my hand. Um, what else? It comes with two pots, the small and the large. Right? There are times that you need, you need that option. <clears throat> I'm going to put on my Discord group later today. There's a video that I watched a year and a half or so ago that changed <clears throat> my airbrushing forever. It was a gentleman that finally took the time uh, to properly show us how to properly clean your airbrush. Okay, if you do not clean your airbrush every session, you're going to have problems. Now I run a 0.5 tip on this and I have spare tips. I wada tips. Do not buy those aftermarket tips or aftermarket parts. 
get your parts, the little seals, anything that you would ever need for this brush, make sure they're Iwata, okay? So you don't have problems. <clears throat> but you can watch that video. I will put it on my Discord group in the airbrush room where we post airbrush content, um, which is where this video is going on Discord and it will be in that, that room. Uh, so yeah, that's what you need. Go ahead, take the splurge, get a Iwata. Even if you don't get the Neo, get an Iwata. I highly recommend them. You know, your typical, you know, you spray into this uh, so you're not, uh, you know, uh, when I'm running my cleaner through here because between colors, I will um, use my airbrush cleaner. Now, the first thing I bought was I got this just so I could have the bottle. Okay, this is all this is, guys. It's distilled water and a couple drops of soap detergent. <laughs> okay, that's all this stuff is. That'll help me between colors. And here's what the other tip I have for you guys um, is pile a few things up so you're using airbrush because you're going to need to clean it every time you use it. So I'll typically will do uh, paints last. I'll do, if I'm doing a top coat, which I like to use micro flat. Micro flat, it's water soluble. Everything you run through here should be water soluble. I'll do that first because it's clear. Then what I'll do is I'll take a paper towel, some cleaner, I'll clean the inside of my bowl. I'll run some cleaner through by spraying it into this. And then I'll start going to some colors. Like if I want to do a black base coat on a few models, then I'll run the black out. Then I may do some white base coats for some models. I want to do white base coat. Uh, so until this Space Marine Army, I was only using this for my top coats and my base coats and on some of my model kits where I wanted to do camouflage or something. But now my larger 28 mils, if I have a base color that will help me out like Romans, I could probably base coat that and do their chain mail with this, with the chain mail color of Vallejo Air now, okay, to try to speed up my process. Uh, the next thing is you need a two-stage air compressor. This is a Timber Tech. Timber Tech. T-I-M-B-E-R Tech. T-E-C-H. <clears throat> because it's going to pump air into this tank and it's, this motor is not going to have to work as hard, right? I run it usually at about 20 PSI, okay? Notice it is not on the floor. It is up here beside my paint booth. So I can keep an eye on the air pressure. I can make adjustments to the air pressure if I want to. And I make sure it's turned on or off, right? So you hear this thing cycle on through the night if you don't turn it off and blank. It's pretty quiet. Let me let some air out. So these, the, most of these units are always gonna come with a, uh, a, a uh, moisture trap is what this is, so you're not getting moisture in the in the uh, in the paintbrush. It's still not enough. All right, she just kicked on. I got a well below 20 psi. So once the air in the tank gets below 20 psi pressure, your motor will kick on and get it back up. You see, it's pretty quiet. Uh, it's on a suction cup chassis that's basically suction cupped onto my table surface. Uh, other things I will use guys, like I said, I clean this thing at the end of the session with rubbing alcohol. I'll pull various components. You'll have to watch that video and let them soak in a small container. Old Tupperware container. <coughs> um, but I'll have extra rubbing alcohol right here. If I wanted to clean the pot out and, uh, and I'll run a little rubbing alcohol through it to make sure it's nice and clean and I clean the tip. Something else that I will keep close by are two things, Q-tips and toothpicks. That's in case I'm starting to get some buildup on the tip. I can screw this off and get that off either with a paper towel or a Q-tip. So I'll keep those handy. These are also good for stirring if you want to mix colors. If you want to spray long sessions, um, I'll put one drop of airbrush thinner in the pot when I'll put paint in. I'll take an old brush and stir it up. 
I didn't need to do that with this Vallejo Air when I painted all these Space Marines in one shot. I did the black first, let them dry, and here's the other nice thing, little trick with an airbrush, guys, is when you push the button down, that's just air. When you pull back on the trigger, that's when the paint will come out. You, that's what you, how you can control how much paint is coming out. If you want just a little bit, or you really want to get a large area, so that helps you dry your miniatures. If I want them to dry quick, I'll get that base coat on and I'll just blow air on them, right? And that speeds that uh, dry time up, right? So that's ready to go for my next paint session already. Um, so watch that video. The other one I will use, Airbrush Flow Improver I have over here on the side. It only takes like a drop, okay? Um, that's if I'm using a paint, I'm I'm watered it down and I still think maybe it's a it's it needs to it's not really an airbrush paint I'll put a little bit of this in the paint um, my base colors I keep them in the dropper bottles you can get these on Amazon whole pack big package of them so that makes it easier to get it into your paintbrush I like to use the badger um, let's see where is I think I don't have a uh, anyways, it's it's the badger. You can get it. You can get the black, the gray, and the white. That's what I use. Um, and that's about it. Uh, rubbing alcohol to clean the brush. And watch the video. You always pull. You take the tip off. You take everything and you pull that, that needle, the airbrush needle. You pull it out the front. Don't ever pull it out the back. That's the one main thing that I learned from this guy that I had never done before. I was always pulling the needle out the back. So you'll find out why if you haven't gotten into airbrushing yet. So there are certain basics to cleaning this airbrush. It's all covered on that video and it'll make your life a whole lot simpler. And your airbrush will work when you need it. Okay, it won't be clogged up. If your airbrush is not spraying properly, you're not cleaning your airbrush properly. It's that simple. Right, um, I thought, well, this airbrush must be junk then or something. And I gave it a good cleaning after I watched this video and I was shocked at how much crap I had not gotten out of that airbrush, right? So thanks for coming along. I hope this helps you newer guys. I've had a lot of uh, uh, questions about this. Like I said, on the group, hey, my little camera light wasn't, oh, it looks like it ran out of batteries. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, I hope this helps you guys and steers you in a general direction. <laughs> and again, this is where I'm at in 2021. In two years, this could be a different regimen. I may be doing some different things uh, here in the studio. I'm always experimenting. I'm always trying new things. And I, I'm also learning from YouTubers that I watch um, and picking up tips and tricks. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.